Hey friends, in this video we're going to walk through how to set up your Figma file for product design. I included a free simple template to help you out with this. We're going to look at how to set up a file for using a basic Figma plan where you're not using any design libraries. Everything's going to sit under one hood in the same Figma file. So be sure to head in the link in the description below to grab the Figma file. If you're new here, my name is Farrakhan, a product designer working in London. Be sure to subscribe for future design related videos and let's get started. So jumping straight into Figma, you can grab this file by heading straight into the link in the description below to grab the design file setup template. Again, this template is going to be a compass that will guide you through your design process and it allows you to have all the right resources under one file. So here is a cover page. You can change the title of this to the title of your project. And let's jump straight into the about page here. So the about page is basically a resource hub with all the central links. Imagine someone that might, might not be on your team, you might have left the team. And in 12 months time, they wanna grab the right resources and understand what the project's about. So all of these are gonna be links to various different places that someone might wanna see. For example, they wanna, might wanna see the project code, any meeting notes, the UX research findings done in Confluence, or for example, any of the backlog Jira tickets. This is basically just a pad that allows people to jump off to the right direction. I also have the final designs into a separate project. I usually use this project for wireframing. However, you can have everything under one hood on this project template as well. To add a link, all you have to do is double click and at the top of Figma here, it says create link and you add the link that you need. So I recommend updating and adding the various links as the project goes on and it's always updating. Next up we have the assets and styles page. So this is really important if you're not on the free plan of Figma, you'll probably be using design libraries, but the chances are you might be in the free plan and that's completely fine if you're new to Figma or you're just getting started off. It means you're not using design libraries, so you wanna put all your styles and components in a central page under this file. The reason being is because things get messy really easily and you don't want things to basically be all over the place. It's really nice to have everything under one hood here. The way it works is you just add all the various styles that you've been using for your project any of the components you've been making such as buttons, text, navigation or any other components and they all live under this place here so then when you go into your other feature pages you can use these components. Next up we have the flows so on Figma you might be using, creating your flows inside Figma or you might be using another tool like Miro that's completely fine but it's good to have at least some screenshots for people to understand the basic flow of the project. So all you have to do is just add the flows for your features under these pages here and just keep this up to date. Next up we have the prototypes so the prototypes are great to have separated on a different page. Some people might like to have the prototypes all under one feature page. However, I like to separate my prototypes in a dedicated page. The reason being is because things get messy really quickly when it comes to prototypes. So having one place where your prototypes live can be really good. The only caveat to this is, is that if you get a really big file, your prototypes might take a while to load. And from experience, if someone's using an older device like an iPhone 6 or an iPhone 5, prototypes don't load on older devices. So be wary of this, but I'm pretty sure like if you're using a small project, you won't have this problem. But all your prototypes will live under this file here. So next up is the main page of where all your design work will be done. So I've split this page up into two. So you've got your latest iterations. So these are the latest wireframes. And then you've got all your wireframe work that lives under the hood here. So you've got a divider line that separates your latest work and all your wireframes. So this is where all of your messy ideations come, all the divergent thinking where you basically explore as many wild concepts as you can and we keep them all under this wireframe tab here. So it's completely fine for this to get completely messy, but I always have the wireframes living under the same feature page. And then once I'm, once I'm done and I'm happy, I add the latest wireframes at the top here. Also, the way this page works is that uh, it's named after each feature. So for example, we've got this delivery food app here. 
and this feature here will be talking all about the checkout process. However, feature two here might be about your login page and then feature three could be about your settings page. I like to branch out features into different pages. The reason being is if your app gets really big, it can get really complicated. And again, it will look really messy and things will just slow down in your design process. So separating things early on can help you a lot. And also another thing here is when it comes to naming the screens, I correlate the feature names to the naming conventions here. The reason being is because if you have a product manager or a product owner, they can reference the number of the screen. So if you've got feedback, it makes it really easy for developers and designers to understand what screen they're talking about. So the way it works is feature zero here and it's column zero and then it's a first screen so it's called checkout whilst this is column one but it's under feature page zero so it'll be 0 0.1 and then this is column two 0 0.2 0 0.3 hopefully you understand that and i think having a great naming convention process can help you loads and long term especially when you're talking to developers and product managers because it's so much easier to reference a screen name so like I mentioned, this is all going to be your latest iteration work and your wireframes underneath here. And then this is basically the same pages duplicated again. So having your features that are branched out. So I've been recently using this, um, this template for a hackathon that I recently done for a homeless hackathon. And I've been using this simple design file setup template to test it out to see how well it works. And as you can see, I've put all of my wireframes underneath here and the features do get really messy here. However, that's the whole point of the wireframes. Everything lives under the hood here and you've got as much as exploratory work as possible here. And then if you go up here, you've got the latest iterations of your work. And these are the ones that have been used by the developers right now. And then I've got a prototype here and then you've got the flows that I haven't mocked out just yet. And I've got my assets and styles that I've been using. But this really helped me when I was working really fast on a really small project inside a hackathon. So hopefully you can see this in action using the file template and I feel like it works really well. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to comment down below how you set up your Figma file and if you found this template useful. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for future design related videos and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.